It's a beautiful day in the neighborhood, a beautiful day in the neighborhood. Do you think YouTube will get me for copyright infringement for saying that? We're going to find out. I'm John Zadar. This is On Top and Hot. It is Monday, November 27th. Now, we're going to do what we always do. We're going to dive into some hot OTC and penny stocks. We're talking about stocks under five bucks can be found on any market. And I'm looking for stocks that have potential to make us money, right? And I'm finding most of my stocks by looking at the charts first. That's where I can find heat quickly. I could go through the news. News is going to take a while to read. There's a lot of it. And then I got to decide what's hot and what's not. By looking at the charts, I can easily determine if there's volume coming in, if there's a breakout setup, if the technicals are all going to the moon. When I find a hot chart, then I'll take the time to go rummaging around through all the paperwork looking for that catalyst. When I get a hot piece of news to go with a hot chart, you've got yourself a hot penny stock. And these are the sort of stocks I'm sharing with you. And of course, I've got some for you today. First one we're going to take a look at was running good this morning. She has come back, but I think she's got a lot more to give. This is New Region Inc., ticker N-R-E-G. Now, to put it in a nutshell for you, do you remember Pickle Jar? Maybe you do, maybe you don't. Pickle Jar was doing a merger with Euling's Ice Cream. And then as fast as they got into the deal, they got out of the deal. And it's just been a couple of weeks, maybe a month. It doesn't seem like it's been that long that they terminated the deal with Euling's Ice Cream. And now they're doing it with this company. Just that fast, they've turned around. So New Region has had a hot chart today, as I said. She was running, and then she has pulled back, though it doesn't show on this chart because this is a daily chart. But she is giving us opportunities over and over again. The chart has been bouncing 300%, then coming down. 300%, then coming down over and over again. It is a volatile uptrend. It's a profitable uptrend. So NREG. She finished today at 0 0.014, about a penny and a half, with almost 28% gains. She is on the pink tier. She's current. She's got both those green ticks we're always talking about. Verified profile and a transfer agent verified. The big deal, this is a pink. Pinks don't give you any validated information, not even their financials. You got to take management's word for everything. That's why when we read press releases with pinks, you take them with a grain of salt. Well, this is validated information by an unbiased third party. So we're ahead of the game on this pink. We do have some important validated information. So what is this company all about? Well, we're not going to look at new regen. We're going to look at pickle jar because they're taking over. There's no, you're going to do your thing. We're going to do our thing. No, they are taking over the ticker. It is a takeover merger. Pickle jar unlocks the potential of shared entertainment experiences through an integrated suite of software and services designed to inspire human creativity and enrich lives. Developed for the era of social commerce, we continuously work to advance tools to unify the touch points of fan engagement with emerging artists, mid-sized venues, and global brands. By embedding secure payment technology, data intelligence, and content distribution, PickleJar's innovative artist promotion programs, venue managed services, and wide range of mobile apps create a 360 view of how fans and patrons connect with music and the moments that matter most. Now jumping on over to their website, they give us a little more information here. From what I've been able to gather, this is a really neat app, especially if you're a small performer. You know, maybe you're a busker. You stand on the corners with your instrument and you sing right there on the streets and they toss money in your hats. Well, this is a digital hat. You can, right there when you're busking on the streets, use this for tips or selling merchandise. Maybe you've got a hat and a t-shirt that you sell. Put one of them up. They can buy them through the app and have it mailed to them by this company. You get tips for playing. They can put the tips in your hat or through the app. They can also tip you for watching online. This is a great way for the small artists to get paid for what they're doing. Goodbye, YouTube. You're doing it for free. Really, kinda. So I think this app is gonna be hot. So what was the relative volume around the company today? Try again. 
<laughs> there we go. Whoa, big jump. She is just doing about 900,000 shares a day for the last 30 days, under a million. Today, she went over 15 million. So you're looking at 15 times her normal volume and we're in big numbers. Share structure, outstanding share count is about 125 million. Looks like the insiders own about 2 million of them, leaving us the rest of about 122 million, an average float. Financials, all right, we have no money uh, back a few years ago. They missed COVID. <laughs> Coming out of COVID, they did $318,000. We know it's thousands because we've got to add three zeros to any of the numbers on any of these charts. At the end of their fiscal year, which ends January of 2023, they had hit $1.8 million. That is a 600% increase in their revenues year over year. And they got to take home profit, $1.2 million. Checking out those quarterly reports. What do we got here? Wow, we got some bouncing around, don't we? So a year ago, they had 111,000. And then at the beginning of this year, it was a strong quarter, 1,111,000. Second quarter was even stronger, going to 1.4 million. And then boom, the bottom drops out. But they have been making some changes here, right? Things are changing for the company. They were moving out, obviously. They were looking for a buyer. So they were winding down. Now we've got a new business coming in. Balance sheet for the company. Well, you know, we're looking at what the company was, not what it's going to be. Currently, the company has 40,000 in the bank. They had 1.2 million in assets and about 800,000, 900,000 in liabilities, which gave us 381,000 stockholder equity. At least we weren't holding a bag. <laughs> there wasn't a lot in what we were holding, but it wasn't an empty bag. Taking a look at the disclosures for the company. We don't have anything here since 2022. So let's just dive on into that news. Now there is a lot of news over here, but we're really only interested in what's going on right now because what was going on has ended. We've got a new game started. And this news came out today. Pickle Jar announces conclusion of definitive agreements with New Regen to accelerate growth and capitalization plan. New Regen and Pickle Jar Holdings today announced the completion of the definitive agreements to combine the companies in an all stock transaction. It was finalized on November 25th. The surviving entity will continue to carry on the business of Pickle Jar as an artist first payments and promotion ecosystem. New Regen will spin off its regenerative medicine business into an operating subsidiary, New Regen Operations, Inc., and they'll carry on doing business as a private business now. That's got nothing to do with us. They're just letting us know where they're going. Good luck, Regen. They tell us that the new entity will be renamed Pickle Jar Entertainment Group and will trade on the OTC market under the ticker NREG until they can get a change approved. Additionally, the management team is working with several prospective capital partners, both in the short and long term, to invest significant capital for Pickle Jar's future roadmap to achieve its 2024 revenue targets and potential acquisitions. Further details of the transaction and background on the transaction process will be included in the company's Form 10 filing to be expected in the coming weeks. And that's really what we want to see. We don't know what sort of revenues this company is making, pickle jar. So that'll all be in there. Now that's all the information they give us here, but I did some more research on pickle jar just to see what I could find. And I found two pieces of news. One that came out April 25th of this year. Cumulus Media and Pickle Jar partner to create daily radio show Pickle Jar Up All Night to air across 47 Cumulus country stations. Pickle Jar, the premier live entertainment and artist payments platform, and Cumulus Media, an audio first media company delivering premium content to over a quarter billion people every month, announced today that they have partnered to create the daily country radio program. Pickle Jar Up All Night. Pickle Jar Up All Night will be featuring emerging country artists, top charting country music, and the biggest stories in entertainment news with exclusive artist interviews and features, and will air in 47 different states. The other piece of news came out October 10th. 
This is building on that new talk show. Pickle Jar and Knocking Inc. for Dynamic E-Commerce Partnership. Radio Steals and Deals premiered on Pickle Jar Up All Night with Patrick Thomas on October 4th. Pickle Jar Holdings and Knocking Inc. are excited to announce a partnership set to drive new revenue streams to the radio and digital streaming industry. Pickle Jar has joined forces with Knocking Inc., a leading content and commerce company specializing in collaborative media shopping experiences. Knocking's unique approach seamlessly integrates engaging shopping segments into media content, offering audiences access to new, popular, and exclusive products while boosting revenue streams for media companies. At the heart of this collaboration is the launch of Radio Steals and Deals, featured on Pickle Jar's Up All Night Show, broadcasting to over 55 country radio stations nationwide with a dedicated listener base of more than 400,000. So Pickle Jar is doing their own thing. They're not just coming onto the market as a startup company. They've been doing stuff for a while here, building up deals, building up advertisement. And it seems to me, I may be wrong here, that they're primarily focusing on country music. I'm sure they'll have anybody come on there. But all of these talk shows and these deals have all been centered around country music. So you see what's going on. It's been hot when they were with Eulings. <laughs> it was running until they terminated the deal. Now we're over here with this company. Is it going to be hot? Is it going to run? Are people upset of what happened already? Did people lose money? I mean, didn't they get out when it was already up? They should have made money on that and be running over here because this chart has got multiple opportunities for making hundreds of percent gains over and over again. Oh, forget about telling you. Let me show you. We're now taking a look at New Regen, soon to be Pickle Jar. This is ticker NREG. And we're going to be doing our charting on my free trading platform, Think or Swim. We are looking at a four hour, six month chart. We've got our low of 0012 back in May, and we hit the high today at about 2.4 cents. Now notice, every time the volume really comes into the picture, we get a rip on the charts. This one back in May went 150%. Then the volume dwindled away. She fell under the 200. Right here, the volume comes back in. She jumps from about uh, 0025 up to 1.2. That's over 300%. Falls back down to the 200, jumps from about 0055 up to 1.7 cents, over 300%. Falls back down to the nine. These are solid landings when she comes down. Bounces back from 007 up to 2.4 cents. You're looking at over 300%. Huge rips here. Now, you could just get in at the bottom and be riding this up. You would be making gains right now. There's nothing wrong with that. Or a day trader could be getting in at the bottom and selling somewhere near the top and then waiting for it to fall back down to a strong SMA, bouncing off that and getting in there, riding it back up and selling somewhere at the top. When she comes back down, bouncing securely on an SMA, get back in, ride it back up. You could be making hundreds of percent gains over and over again with this stock. Volume does come in on those days. I'd be keeping my eye on the volume. Osculators are all very strong. They're radical. They're bouncing all over the place. But our PPO is climbing hard and fast, just like our MACD. Our RSI is currently falling. She hit that high of 2.4 cents and fell back to about 1.3 cents. Coming down to that 20-day, one-hour view. Not a lot of trading about two weeks ago. Each one of these bars is an hour. We've only got one bar in each day. Hit a low there of about 0025. Once she got over the 50, look at our bars get big, lots of excitement. So she's pushing from 0025 up here to about 1.2. Whoo, you're looking at 300, 350% gains. Down to the 50, one tap, two tap, three taps, off and running right? She is just showing you that she's not wanting to go underneath. She's just getting her bearings. Came right up underneath the 200 and took off again. Nice, big, long bars showing us the direction she wants to go. She's come down 
almost hit the 200, definitely going through the 20, bouncing off of that, climbing again. So what you've got is this, you know, up and down ebb and flow, but she is climbing and bouncing. All of these SMAs look gorgeous, don't they? Nice, evenly spaced and evenly combed out. Our oscillators, they were very hot, as you would expect with the back half of the day coming down. They're now in the down part of their flow. We do have a crossover on our MACD right now. That's been the first one in quite a few days. RSI, it's down to 51 right now and is still pointing down. Looking at our five day, five minute. So what do we got there? We have no 200 day SMA on the screen. 50 day is dominant. She is on an uptrend, though she's trying to curve down right now. We were at a low back here of 0051. We got over the 50, bounced off to 50 with the rubber ball bounce, right? Up under the water and then back up and jumping out of the water. Coming down on her nine day SMA, a secure landing and climbing. We've got three bars here before she starts pulling back. These are gonna be your sign to get out. One, two, three bars in, in five minute time frame. That's 15 minutes. That's plenty of time to be getting out. She continued to fall. Yeah, she might test this, but she didn't win, did she? She's come down underneath her 20, underneath her 50, and it looks like she's still falling right now. All of our oscillators look weak right now. At this very moment on the five minute chart, it doesn't look good. But we've got a new merger on the table, one that everybody was playing with Yuling's ice cream. Maybe they'll come back. Maybe we'll have new people. Maybe some have an attitude. It won't be here at all. We're going to have to see. But it was worth a watch the first time. It's worth a watch the second time. N-R-E-G, the new pickle jar. Our next stock had a really good day. She had some big news come out today as well. This is Visium Technologies, ticker VISM. Now, she had a breakout, I guess you'd call it that, a couple months ago. We had an atypical breakout setup, and she got up over that 200, looked like she was going to run, and then came back down, but not under the 200. It's been about two months. She has just been bouncing across the 200, waiting for something to give her a launch, and this looks like it's going to be it. This company is not making any revenues, and this news is talking about millions of dollars coming to the company now. So Vism finished the day at just over two and a half cents and just under 50% gains. She's on the pink tier as well. She's current. We don't have any of those green ticks. No validated information here. No verified profile. No verified transfer agent. I am more assured seeing them there, but as a day trader, I feel confident if I can get in and get out, I'm not going to get my butt smacked because they weren't there. If you get into these for long holds, you really can't tell what's going to go on down the road because you have no validated information. Everything would then be speculation with these companies. So what is Vism all about? Well, they tell us here that Vism Technologies is involved with data center design and professional infrastructure services and cybersecurity solutions. Their one world class true context TM cybersecurity technology platform provides visualization, advanced cyber monitoring intelligence, data modeling, analytics, and automation to help reduce risk, simplify cybersecurity, and deliver better security outcomes. The true context TM plugs the gap left by other security tools. So they're not just a cybersecurity company, they've got a product that helps with other security tools that aren't doing as well as they should. So what's the relative volume around Vism today? Now that's a nice jump. We got over six times their normal volume, 600% increase, going from just under a half a million shares to over 3.2 million. Share structure for Vism. They tell us here that the outstanding share count is about 46 million, that the insiders own roughly 16 million of those, leaving us afloat of just about 30 million if those numbers are correct. We can live with 30 million. That's not a bad float at all. Ooh, look at how small that market cap is. Under a million, $789,000. Taking a look at the financials for Vism, they're not making any money. There's nothing coming in annually. There is nothing coming in quarterly, which is why this news is so relevant and so important. Let's take a look at her balance sheet, see how she's sitting right now. <laughs> 
All right, she's got cash and cash equivalents of $9,000. Thank God for those three zeros, right? Total assets, that's it, $9,000. Oh, God. Total liabilities, $4.2 million. That $9,000 deducted off of that isn't changing much. We are holding a deficit of stockholder equity equity of $4.2 million. So this news is really good. This should change all of this for the company. Taking a look at the disclosures. We have their most recent 10Q that just came out a couple days ago. Lots of information in that if you want to know about the company. Forget about Google. Honestly, you'll be wasting your time jumping from site to site, getting pieces of information. A 10Q, a 10K has everything about the company from the day they were incorporated. Just get used to reading them, folks. It'll save you a lot of time and give you a lot of information. And we've got an 8K here. This was uh, changes to their bylaws. Outside of that, there was no other filings we need to look at. So let's take a look at that news. So we've got a few pieces of news here. And all of them actually relate to this contract with the Sebastian Institute of Technology. The CEO gave us a shareholder letter, which is what he was talking about. So we're just going to jump into the most current piece of news here and just get the most recent view of what's going on. The company announced today that they are entering the West Africa data center construction market after it landed a contract valued at over $20 million from its partner, Sebastian Institute of Technology, to oversee the design and construction of data centers in the Republic of Cote d'Ivoire in the Republic of Benin. Now, we're going to come back, but let's take a look at who Sebastian Institute is. Sebastian Institute is a leading cybersecurity business providing state-of-the-art technology and solutions with a particular focus on emerging markets, especially in Africa. Sebastian is one-stop shop for all cybersecurity needs, offering cybersecurity solutions, infrastructure, and digital technology. The company has a large footprint in Africa and work in eight countries. Visium is tacked with creating data centers that meet specific requirements and standards, ensuring optimal performance and reliability. The creation of the National Data, data Center in Coyote is intended to ensure the digital sovereignty of the country. Sounds pretty bloody serious to me. The company says they anticipate recognizing 100% of this revenue in 2024. I'd like to know how much they're going to get in 2023. The African market is projected to reach $5 billion by 2026. As previously announced, we executed a letter of intent in September, which has progressed to this first definitive agreement. We anticipate that additional contracts will be awarded to Visium in the coming weeks in the amounts to be determined by Sebastian, which has signed significant agreements in excess of $900 million with several countries. So they've got one contract for sure for $20 million that they're getting invested into right now. I don't know if they're going to make any money this year, but there's money going to be coming in and they don't have any money at all. So that is excellent. And they're in the queue for more business from their partner, which is going to put them first in line to get that business. So as far as I can see, we've got a huge deal here with their partner, which is just going to get bigger and it's going to change their shell status or shell risk. Do they have that here? No, it's not there. Well, they're not making any money. One way or the other, they're a shell and we're going to change that. That's big news, folks. That's why I think we need to be watching this. Plus, the stock is now reaching a point to where it looks like it wants to break out. Perfect timing. There's a lot going on in that chart. It's just really tightly squeezed. This is Visum, ticker V-I-S-M, Visium Technologies. We are looking at a six month, four hour view. It was six months ago in March, we had a high of about 25 cents and then the bottom fell out and she came down here to two cents. But she fell even lower, hitting a low of 006 here at the beginning of August. Now, right here is where we had our atypical breakout setting up Price was getting close to the 200, 200 getting priced to the close, and she did. She broke out, and that's when we looked at it. 
September 18th right here when she was at about a penny and a half. Now, right after we looked at it, she actually fell, came underneath the 200, skirting it, would not let go of the underneath. And then about six days later, she took a rip and we went up 100% from where we looked at it. She came back down hitting the 200 and she's just been going sideways, tagging that 200 every now and then. But right now, she is teasing us. You can see she has hit that resistance numerous times, including today. That is up there at 30 cents and she's fallen back to just over 25 cents. Volume has been really strong, but patchy. Right now, if you look close, you can see our nine day SMA is grabbing new heights. It's getting over the 200 day haul, pushing up. This looks like it's ready to climb. Our oscillators say it is. Our PPO is pushing up very strong, just like our MACD, huge green bars coming into the picture, and our RSI has jumped from 47 up to 61. Taking a look at our 20 day, one hour view. So we had a big drop here from about two cents to one cent, and then bouncing back. Think about that, that's a 100% bounce back. 50% down, 100% up. Could have been a quick grab. I mean quick, because these don't normally stay down there very long. She came back up over the 200. She was up there quite a few days, fell up underneath, had a nice rip hitting that resistance, coming back down, another strong dip before she ripped. Coming up to that resistance, and right now, as I said, our nine-day SMA is starting to float away, carrying the price with her. Oscillators, PPO is still rising nicely, as is our MACD. RSI is getting a little bit planted right now. It's been going sideways, but that's what it looks like on the chart, too. Looking at our five-day, five-minute. So what do we got? We got a high five days ago, just under three cents. We hit a low here, just over a penny. That's another 100% drop right there, 50%. Coming back up is 100%. Keep that in mind. Every time she goes down through these resistances and comes back up, it's 100% movement. She has only come down a little bit this last time. She is not giving away all of her gains. We are well above the 50% mark, actually bouncing off of it right there. You can see that. She's over the 50, over the 20, on top of the 9. It's a perfect setup. All of our oscillators look like they are trying to recover. No, our MACD is pushing down. Boy, our MACD is coming down hard right now. Look at this. Really coming down hard. Our PPO is coming down, but starting to turn up. This looks like we could, maybe not. I was going to jump to that divergence again, but I can see the price came down and it lifted up and it flipped. That's what we got, down, up, and flip. So everything looks cool here. <laughs> Don't mind me. I analyze charts a little too much. I'm liking Vism, folks. She is a no-revenue company coming into millions and millions of dollars. One deal already guaranteed on the table with other who knows how big these other deals are going to be? But you're talking about a $900 million contract Sebastian has their partner and their first in the queue to get this business. I'm liking it, folks. I think she has a real good chance of running. It's worth putting on your watch list. V-I-S-M. Visium Technologies. Finally, we got ourselves a hot penny stock from the major exchange. We look at a lot of stocks coming from the NASDAQ because the NASDAQ has a lot of heat. Personally, I prefer to trade penny stocks on the major exchanges. There's just a lot of benefits to it. One, you don't have to pay anything to get in and get out like you do on the OTC. Two, there's got to be at least 10 times more volume on the NASDAQ than there is on the OTC. And three, there's a lot more money on the major exchange than the OTC. So yeah, it's one of my favorite playgrounds by a long shot. So we're looking at Synchronos, ticker SNCR. She just came out with her financials, and they're pretty good. And as I was reading her financials, I was seeing who she's doing business with. And I was surprised to see the big corporations she's doing steady business with. Now her chart, it's been at a downtrend for a while, but she is now turning around and looks like she's ready to grow. As you can see down here, we're at about 50 cents and up here at a dollar is where she fell from. So I'm looking at at least 100% run up to that point. So SNCR finished today, just over 58 cents and just under 5% gains. 
So what is SNCR all about? Well, they tell us here that the company is a global leader in personal cloud solutions, empowering service providers to establish secure and meaningful connections with their subscribers. Our software as a service cloud platform simplifies onboarding processes and fosters subscriber engagement, resulting in enhanced revenue streams, reduced expenses, and faster time to market. Millions of subscribers trust Synchronos to safeguard their most cherished memories and important digital content. They are a cloud business, a secure cloud business, and cloud is real big right now, folks. Relative volume around SNCR, about the same. She dropped a little bit, about 40,000 shares from 488,000 down to 441,000. Share structure for the company, they don't give us a lot of information. Outstanding shares is about 93 million. We don't know what the float is. It could be up to 93 million or it could be considerably less. Your guess is going to be as good as mine. Market cap for the company is just about 52 million. Taking a look at the financials for Synchronos. Well, they're not doing bad except they've been falling. For the last four years, starting off at 308 million, falling down to 252 million. However, look here. With 252 million, they brought in more profit, 161 million, compared to back here, 158 million, when they did about $60 million more in revenue. So they're tweaking something nicely here, but they should get those revenues back up. Looking at the quarterly, well, it's steady. She's doing between 60, 65 every quarter, and they're bringing in between 37 and $40 million every quarter. So it is just steady revenues for them. Balance sheet for the company. In the bank, cash and cash equivalents, they've got about 19 million. Total assets, 384 million. Total liabilities is less, 250 million. That leaves us positive stockholder equity of about 51 million. So we're not holding the bag of nothing here. <laughs> Disclosures for SNCR. Yes, I wanted to share this with you. When we look at the news, you'll see that uh, Seeking Alpha announced some insider buys. Three of them, a 10% owner, a big wig, the CFO, and a director. And when you add up all the shares, it's 150,000 shares. That's pretty decent. But honestly, it was just the tip of the iceberg. Ask the Titanic, they'll tell you. What we've got here is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven form fours. I've already got them opened up and I want to share these with you folks so that you can see what we're talking about. Up here is the name of the person. Not that that really matters. Over here is who they are to the company. This is the chief executive officer. Right here in the center, you get all your information. When they bought them. P is for purchase, A is for acquired, green means they got them, 160,000 shares at 47 cents. Here we have the director, the director got 32,000 shares at 44 cents. Another director, 115,000 shares. And look up at the corners, you'll see these are all different people. Chief financial officer bought himself another 15. 50,000 shares. Here's two purchases. This comes from a 10% owner. One was on the 10th of November. One was on the 13th. 544,000 shares and 25,000 shares. We're not done. <laughs> We're still looking at purchases. 74,000 shares from a 10% owner. And the last one, this is a director, 17,000 and 7,000. Now, you probably didn't have your calculator out there, but it comes out to just under a million shares. Just under a million shares have been bought here, folks, since, uh, let me see, November 17th, 16th, 14th, 13th, that's it. So you're talking in the last 10 days, 12 days, we have had a million shares bought by the insiders. Now, the financials just came out and they were good. We're going to look at those. But do you think now might be a good time to get in since every one of the insiders seems to think so? Yeah, exactly. So let's dive into that news now. Let me close this up. So many windows. So we've got lots of news here, but it all comes into one piece. 
They tell us that they have a deal with a Japanese communications carrier called SoftBank. They have just sold their messaging and networks business to Luminine Group. And as I said, they give us a peekaboo here about some of the insider buys. But the third quarter 2023 results gives us all this information at one time. So looking at the bullets, the company completes sale of messaging and network X business realizes multi-year strategy of cloud only operating model. They tell us down here they got $41.8 million for that sale. Net cash provided by operating activities as reported in their most recent financials, $6.7 million, a 53% increase from the $4.4 million that they had the same time last year. And year over year invoiced cloud revenue increase of 10% to $41 million, supported, check this out, supported by the 14th consecutive quarter of double digit cloud subscriber growth. Every quarter they're having at least 10% or more, more subscribers coming in, more and more. Their business is growing very, very quickly. Uh, they secured a seven year contract extension with Verizon to provide Synchronos Cloud through 2030. The company launched Synchronos Personal Cloud with SoftBank, powering one of Japan's largest telecommunication carriers. They extended existing cloud agreement with AT&T for an additional year under existing contract terms. Folks, these are huge corporations trusting this company and paying this company. And as we already read, the company achieved 10% year-over-year cloud subscriber growth for the third quarter of 2023. That is the 14th consecutive quarter of double-digit growth. On October 31st, 2023, the company successfully completed the sale of its messaging and network X business to Luminine Group for a total consideration of $41.8 million. In light of this sale transaction, I'm reading this because maybe some of you think this is still on the table, a deal that was going to happen but is now being backed out of. B.F. Riley Financial informed the company that it is no longer pursuing the acquisition of the company as outlined back in March of this year. They were originally going to buy the company out for a cash price of $1.15 a share. Right now we're at 58 cents. Woo wee. So they had a deal on the table, but now that they've sold part of the company off, they're not doing it anymore, but they're not upset. They believe this was a strong move for the company. Even the biggest investors believe this was a smart move for the company. So we've got good financials. We've got steady growth and subscribership. We have money to work with. Everything is going the way it should. And if you don't believe me, ask the insiders. They just bought up almost a million shares in the last 10 to 12 days. Something is ready to pop and you want to be a part of that, right? I thought so. Let's go take a look at that chart. Let's take a look at Synchronos Technologies, ticker SNCR. That's a six month, four hour view. And I hesitate to call that a atypical breakout chart, but that is what it really is, right? You've got your 200-day SMA coming down fast and furious. Our price deep down underneath the 200. Right now, the price is working towards the 200 and the 200 towards the price. Looks like they're ultimately going to collide, and that's when we're going to have our breakthrough and breakout. That's what we're hoping for. So we had a high back here in August of $1.15, then a tremendous fall down here to $0.30 cents at the beginning of November. Now you can see we've had a lot of volume coming in at this fall. And when she started the climb, we had a big burst of volume, the biggest we've had. And that changed the trend right there. All of our SMAs were falling, hitting this low bubble. We had that big breakout over the 50. That was a breakout over the 50. She's climbing and pulling away. And that has tugged all of our SMAs off of the downtrend into the uptrend. Every single one of them with our price on top of the nine, above all the rest, with the bars getting bigger, looking like she's anxious to get to that 200. Volume isn't too tremendous right now, not since that burst right there. Our oscillators, our PPO is steady going up. Our MACD 
She did fall, but she's got a crossover going on right now. She's just now getting on top of the other line, and our RSI is actually falling. You can see it's coming down from 65 down to 58, though you really can't see it on the chart right now. Looking at our 20-day, one-hour view. Oh, look at that bull. Always look at that 200. She's coming down, got level right here, right where she broke out, right? Right where she started the level off, and now she is pushing up. So we had a perfect cup and handle here almost. She fell, came down, came up. There's your cup. Then you have your handle come down about 30 to 40%, and then it'll rip. And that's what we had. It came down, bounced over that 200, bounced and tested the 200, and now she's off and running. She was floating on her nine, tried to 20. That wasn't enough for her. She's come down to the 50. That was good enough. We don't need to come all the way down to the 200. She tested the 50. She's pushed off of it. She's coming back down, but it looks like she's giving her strength to the 20 and the 50. Looks like she's going to continue to climb. She hit a high today of 62 and a half cents and then pulled back and is currently at about 58 cents. Oscillators, they show strength, but they also show that she's cooling off right now. And our RSI has had a big turnaround coming from 66 down to 53. Take a look at our five-day, five-minute. Whoa, we had a big drop there, didn't we? That dropped from uh, 58 cents down to 52 cents. So look bigger. But still, six cents is a pretty big drop coming virtually down to the 200, back up, and then walked towards the 200. She was not interested in climbing. She just wanted to get to the 200. Didn't quite make it here. Maybe if she'd have touched it here, she'd have started to push up, but she didn't. She needed to actually touch it. Now she's all over it, laying on it. And finally, when it gets flat, right? Our 200 was on an incline here. It's rolling around and right there it is flat. You can see this happening over and over again, folks. When the 200 gets flat, it is the most opportune time for the price to break out. Price jumped up over it. It didn't start climbing immediately. It had to test it. Boing, boing, boing. It's beating it up, making sure it's strong. Once it's confident, it came down deep. This was a bit scary, but you've got to crouch to pounce, just like a cat. You never see a cat just stand there and jump. It always crouches first and then jumps. You see that on the charts a lot, right there. She's just laying up there, testing, testing, crouch, boom, big pounce. She came all the way down here to 53, jumped up to 64, and right now, ooh, look at that. She was going sideways, right? She's biding time instead of falling all the way down. That was a lot of fall. She said, nope, I'm going to wait for this 50-day SMA. 50-day SMA came along, looked like she was going to take off. Everything was looking good, and then something happened. She fell away, broke the 50, broke the 20, broke the 9, and now she's falling under the 9 down to the 200. And I'm going to presume she's going to hit the 200. Just, just think she is. So we're down there at about 57 cents. That would be a good buy price. I put in a buy there. If it doesn't hit, well, catch it as close as you can. But I would definitely look for a dip down to the 200. Our oscillators, well, our PPO has already had the crossover right there. It's coming down. My ADX is coming up. This tells me trend continuation. And I put my ADX underneath my PPO and I look for patterns. Whenever the blue line and the red line are coming together, as you see right now, your price is falling. Whenever you see the two going apart from each other, your price is rising. That's guaranteed 100%. And right now, they're telling me the price is falling. So is the MACD. It just broke through its line underneath the signal line, big green bars accumulating. Woo! And look at our RSI. Fell from 67 all the way down to 36. That is scary. I don't like that at all. So I would watch for it. It really pays a lot of heed to the 200 here, folks. She got a nice rip. She's broke everything. Sure enough, she's going to come back down to that 200 and then probably bounce. She had good financials. They've got money and they've got a good client list. And they just renewed a whole bunch of contracts. Why isn't this a good investment? I did mean to say day trade, but it is a good investment as well.
So I've given you three stocks here, folks, that have got catalysts, that have got hot charts. What they need is a little more due diligence from you because it's your money you're investing, and I'm not licensed to give you advice to buy or sell. So all I'm doing is sharing my insights, my due diligence. What you do with it is up to you. Remember, folks, the more you know, the more you're going to grow. See ya. Thank you.